another party of Canadian servicemen's wives and kiddies are off to their new homes across the sea. By boat train, they leave London for the port of embarkation. Since 1939, some 24,000 British girls have married Canadians. 3,000 of them already have been sent to Canada by the Department of Immigration. Young sons and daughters of the Dominion will grow up in the Canadian way of life for which Daddy is fighting on many a shell-torn field. On arrival at the port, everybody is safely stowed aboard the ship which will take them on their long journey. Members of the British Red Cross give valuable assistance during all phases of the move. Johnny Canuck Jr. wonders if it isn't time for eats. So it's a way to a new life in the land of opportunity. To her new citizens, Canada extends the hearty hand of welcome. In Italy, Major General Vokes explains to the first Canadian Div the system for selecting men for home leave. To the five-year boys goes a 30-day leave of absence in Canada. To the lads of Ortona and the Hitler line, the news is the greatest event of the war. Selected by a draw, the draft of 200 all ranks is off to Naples on the first lap of their voyage home. Not a dull face in the crowd as everybody looks forward to spending Christmas with the families they've not seen for five long years. Parade in England is the leave draft from the Western Theatre and the United Kingdom. Just so that no one misses the boat, embarkation tags are handed out. This is one time that not a single man will be A.W. Luce. In Canada, they say, there are chocolate ice cream sundaes, luscious hamburgers with onions, Sticks two inches thick and gallons of old Canadian ale. Hey, fellas, wait for me. I can't stand this another minute. Wait for me. From the supply ports of Belgium, thousands of mailbags containing Christmas parcels pour in. By truck, they are brought to the Postal Corps unit serving the 1st Canadian Army. The folks back home have been doing their Christmas mailing early. For some weeks, a steady stream of welcome cartons have been rolling in for the boys in the forward units. At the postal unit, bags are transferred to divisional transport, which carries the valuable cargo up to the various unit distributing centers. At a divisional signals office, the quota is unloaded for the boys of the RCCS. Parcels are sorted and handed out to eager signalmen. What Johnny Canuck needs at Christmas time is a good five cent cigar. It replaces the old fashioned smoke grenade. The army queue for Santa Claus has one big advantage. Whether you've been a good boy or whether you've just finished 28 days, you still may get a Christmas box. A jeep load of good things arrives at the Canadian Provo Corps. The Red Caps take time out from proving that crime doesn't pay to delve into St. Nick's Pack. Yep, there's one in every unit. The kibitzer takes more of an interest in your parcel than you do yourself. Even when he gets a parcel himself, he's still more interested in yours. Oh, come right in, old man, and help yourself.
Winter comes in earnest to the Western Front. A blanket of cold, wet snow covers everything. Dropping temperatures make wood chopping more than just a pleasant interlude. Even the sergeant makes with the axe to keep improvised homes in the Netherlands mud warm and cozy. chicken in a Canadian camp? Mm, how strange. Introducing hardtack, the feathered mascot of a field artillery battery. Even the jeeps need a wash job after being pelted from the sky by the bomber squadrons of King Winter. Out on the gun sites, a battle rages hot and furious. Shooting over open sights at point-blank range, direct hits are scored. Old King Winter has no heart. Probably the family wash will be dry in time for Easter. Who knows? With weather bogging down operations, the role of the 1st Canadian Army remains static. A freeze-up is awaited to enable our armor to forge ahead into Germany. In a London air raid shelter during a buzz bomb raid, an idea is born. A quack officer reading a magazine sees an advertisement on the making of toys. A parcel of material is sent by her sister in Canada, enough to fashion hundreds of toys. The girls of the CWAC immediately get to work. Each girl's task is to make one toy. With scissors and sewing machine, they spend many off-duty evenings in an old-fashioned sewing circle. Quaint little playthings fashioned by skillful fingers begin to take shape. When they are finished, they will be given to British kiddies who otherwise would receive no presents from Santa Claus. Many a little heart will be filled with cheer when Christmas Day dawns. Many a little English lass and laddie will spend a happy Christmas Thanks to the good work of those fair helpers of St. Nick, the soldiers of Canada's CWAC. Christmas comes early to Holland. St. Nicholas arrives with his presents on the 5th of December. Canadian cooks work overtime to provide a spread for the grand old fellow and his little Dutch flock. Saint from Spain has adopted modern methods of transportation. In Holland, he used to ride over the housetops on a white horse, but now he's mechanized. He is accompanied by his servants, the Black Peters. They put the presents in the little wooden shoes, which are left on the chimney piece with carrots in them for Saint Nick's steed. This year, it'll probably be a grease gun instead of a carrot. The party is a huge success. Why wouldn't it be with all the luscious eatables for hungry tummies? General Creerau attends the celebration and gets as much kick out of it as do the kids. With the toddlers, Canadian fighting men are right at home. They are reminded of their own little ones across the sea. The good Saint Nick calls on his Black Peters to produce the big book in which is written the names of all the good little girls and boys who are to receive presents. It's amazing that there isn't one black mark against anyone on the list. Thanks to the sergeant's rations, there's plenty of sweets for everybody. All good things must come to an end. St. Nicholas is away to visit other boys and girls all over the world. His made in Canada Bren carrier is champing at the bit. Young Holland will remember for a long time their 1944 Canadian Christmas party.